Okay. Uh, my name is Mark Toomer, and uh, in, uh, on October 23, 1983, I went to Denver. The sun was shining, the weather was warm, and we were met by Wade Blank, who told us that we would be extremely valuable on the picket line outside of the airport. This was my first encounter with Wade and or pickets. And about 4 p.m., Wade had a call that there was trouble at the Hilton. So, leaving a small nucleus to welcome the American Public Transportation Association at the airport, we piled into three vans and went downtown. We were unloaded at the front entrance of the beautiful downtown Hilton, and we joined 25 other wheelchair users already on the sidewalk. The set look on the faces of APTA met men as they arrived, and their averted eyes showed we were already at least noticed. That evening, we gathered at an unused Jewish synagogue Wade had rented for a supper of beans, salad, hot dogs, and cookies. Wade explained that he was on 24-hour call, and if there was any problem, it would be taken care of within 10 minutes. Everyone was given the chance to make comments. Then we were loaded into the Atlantis van, six wheelchairs to a van, and taken to places where we were to stay. The next morning was one of those typical intermountain days. Uh, from a high of 75 on Sunday to a wet, drizzly high of 53. We circled the building about 10 feet apart to be very visible to all passers-by. We all had distinctive pins, we will ride, adapt, American Disabled for Accessible Public Transportation. And we demonstrated our dissolve, resolve all day, and we were bundled up as best we could. And many of us thought we had permanent frostbite in our feet. And the press was everywhere. TV, radio stations, newspapers, McNeil Lair Report, Washington Post and the U.S. News. Most of us in wheelchairs had the opportunity to be interviewed by local TV, radio, and newspapers. We passed out literature about ADAPT and spoke to anyone who would speak to us. We were pulled off the picket lines at 4 p.m. and transported to the synagogue for dinner and a discussion by Dennis Cannon from the Architectural Barriers and Transportation Compliance Board. Then on Tuesday, the day was glorious, 72 degrees, sun shining, and we didn't have to man the picket lines until 9 a.m. We surrounded the building again and traded off shifts in the sun and shade because there was a low of 40 degrees and it took time to warm up. The article in the paper was pushed to the third page because of the invasion of Granada. Certain concessions were given when APTA officials got concerned about the smooth running of their conference. For not disrupting the meetings, ADAPT bargained a 20-minute presentation to APTA on Wednesday morning just before Andrew Young, uh, the ex-United Nations ambassador, and he was then mayor of Atlanta, Georgia. Negotiations were held in Mayor Kenya's office about the logistics of the presentation for the next day. Wednesday, we arrived at 8.15 at the United Bank, Bank Plaza and 36 degree weather and wheeled to the hotel. The street lobby was empty and we encountered no difficulty in gaining use of the freight elevators. No one stopped us. One of the things adapted made clear was that our presentation would not start until the hall was full. At 9.35, the meeting was called to order, introductions by ADAPT and Mayor Pena's office were made, and we started. During the presentation of the resolution, the ADAPT members softly, then louder, chanted, we will ride, we will ride, we will ride, continuously. It carried such an emotional impact, some members of APTA joined in with us. Following the presentation, we assembled in the small park, kitty corner from the Hilton. Mayor Young spoke on the parallels of the two movements, the civil rights movement and the disability rights movement, and of the necessity for accessible transportation. There was a meeting with ADAPT, a high official of the Urban Mass Transit Act, and Dennis Cannon of the AT, ABT, CB board, with the outcome being that UMTA official and Dennis will meet with the Secretary of Transportation, Elizabeth Dole, who successfully avoided us on Monday, by the way, to discuss the pros and cons of paratransit and mainline accessibility. That's all.